Hellraiser 2022, the movie. What did I think of it? Spoilers ahead. Let's let's look at that straight away. Okay, so what I'm going to cover here is I'm going to cover the length of the movie, scenes that were unnecessary, what I thought of Pinhead, certain little plot holes or stupid things that happened, and potentially the ending. So let's have a look at the unnecessary scenes first. Now, my first... First time I looked at the watch, it was 43 minutes in. Second time was an hour and 19. And both of those times, I'm like, how long is this thing going for? So when you're only into 45 minutes and you're already wondering, yeah, the movie's, the pacing of the movie is just dragging. An hour and 19, I thought, oh, and half an hour left. How are they dragging an extra half an hour out of this? Jesus Christ. So, you know, there is that. Okay, scenes that are unnecessary. The sex scenes, straight off the bat, get rid of them. Just get rid of the sex scenes. We never learned anything from the sex scenes that was needed, uh, that was part of the movie. So throw them out. Now, there's a part of the movie where the cube was found in a box. The box was in a safe. The safe was in a shipping container, and the shipping container was in a warehouse. What they did was they looked up the owner of the warehouse and they found it was like the personal secretary of Big Boss Old Mate. They went to find her. She, they somehow found her in hospice dying from lung issues. And she told them that Big Boss Old Mate was the one who owned the cube. So then they went and looked up who Big Boss Old Mate was and got some info. At that point, we haven't learned anything new because we already know that Big Boss Old Mate owned the cube from the way the movie started. So it was a whole scene where we didn't learn anything new. Now, the woman ended up being sacrificed to the cube. So if the whole scene was there just to sacrifice her to the cube, then we could have sacrificed somebody else to the cube and just let them find out when they asked a the question, well, where did the cube come from? Who owned that building? Let's look. Oh, big boss old mate. And there we go. And we've saved that whole scene. Now, in terms of the people and their relationships with each other, while one of the brother and sister things was kind of like a thing, it was kind of like also not necessary as a thing. We didn't actually need anybody to be related to each other. We didn't need to have anybody to be sexually attracted to each other or anything like that the simplest thing to me seeing as one of them was going through a 12 steps program would be to have them all be in a share house through a 12 steps program and that way they are fully supporting each other always every day trying to help each other always every day and they would have a very strong affinity for each other then to find out near the end that one of them tried to sacrifice all of the others, yeah, that would make you pretty damn mad. So in that case, that to me would be a very good plot of avenue instead of the way that it went down. Okay, so having said that, sex scenes unnecessary, uh, personal relationships, uh, rel related to each other, boyfriend, girlfriend, all of that totally unnecessary. Just have them as 12 steps people. Bunch of scenes that could easily have been cut out. Now let's talk about the Cenobites. Pinhead. The original Pinhead was a male and his voice, pitch, tone and cadence of his voice just had dread. Written. When he turned up, there was just dread and foreboding, all, all written all over him. This pinhead's played by female, and while they did try to manipulate her voice electronically, and it kind of sounds androgynous, there was just no sense of threat in the delivery, the pitch, the tone, the cadence. Just there was no sense of foreboding about pin in this pinhead at all. You just didn't yeah like whatever you always felt that from a character's point of view i stand a chance against this one the other pinhead the original pinhead there's no way you ever thought you even stood a chance so there is that 
And in fact, none of the Cenobites really had that sense of dread or foreboding about them. That's what I felt at least anyway. Now, I'm not really sure if that's just because I'm used to them. And so you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like saying, seeing the same movie over again. And so you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it's that, like a first time viewer that's never seen the original Hellraisers or any of the other Hellraisers. I'm not sure if they would feel the same, but that's how I felt. Okay, so the, those Cenobites and the Pinheads, not really, there was no sense of threat or foreboding. Now, some of the couple of little interesting, really annoying things, really. When they go to old Big Boss Old Mate's house and the Asian girl gets stabbed by the cube, so she's going to be sacrificed into the cube. And she is in the van. They're escaping in the Scooby van. The, I guess, I'm not sure if he was like a South American type of Latino guy or, or what his ethnicity, ethnicity was supposed to be. But I don't know how to describe him. Let's just call him the guy in glasses. So when the guy in glasses was with the Asian girl in the Scooby van at the back looking after her and she's bleeding, they've made a wrong turn. So the heroine of the movie and her boyfriend are in the front arguing about it. He decides to join the argument and the three of them are just arguing needlessly about whether someone made a wrong turn or not. And I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Like the argument is just convoluted at this point, dragging on and on and on, simply so that the Cenobites could take the girl from the back of the van without anybody noticing. Until they did notice. And then she sort of exploded, however, she, you know, they pulled her apart. And uh, then the back of the van just got blood in it. So the, the plot device was arguing and being distracted while something else went on over here. And immediately after that, they crashed the van and then they were stuck. And it's like, well, we've got to go back to the house. Why? Because we've got to get the other car. Well, then they start arguing again. So the two guys are now arguing. And so the girl, we've just seen that plot device. Argument as distraction. Now here we go again. Over the top arguing, which to me at that point is arguing about arguing. So the girl can get the cube and run off and have a nice little confab with Pinhead about whatever. Now Pinhead makes the cube stab her. So therefore we can come for you any time. You need to sacrifice two other people to the cube. And then we'll leave you alone. It's like, okay. Fine. So one of the sacrifices, just the way the thing ended, it just... The Cenobite came. So they are standing behind a gate. For some reason, the Cenobite materialized on the other side of the gate. Could have come up behind them. But anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Materialized on the other side of the gate. That strong just pushes the gate. Now, here's where we get stupid and convoluted. And they keep going back with the gate until they're up against the wall. Now, the Cenobite has them pinned against the wall for this gate. Then is trying to get them through the gate. Dumb Cenobite. All you had to do was walk to the side of the gate. They're going nowhere. They're trapped between the gate and the wall. You just open the gate up and you've got free access to them. This convoluted on trying to reach you through the gate stuff didn't make a lot of sense. So then the girl stabs that Cenobite with the cube. Therefore, sacrificing the Cenobite to the cube. And I thought, well, hang on, doesn't the Cenobite have to already have come into that realm through the cube? And then the priest, the head Cenobite, which is Pinhead, then says, well, you know, hey, you got stabbed by the cube, so I have to use my chains to rip you apart. Well, no, this is one of your buddies. What are you doing? Why are you ripping them apart? You like that just didn't make a lot of sense to me, but that was apparently then one of the sacrifices for the cube. So there is that. Now the other thing is, in the big boss old mate's mansion, it had certain cage around it, and the girl was able to get into the house through one of the holes in the cage, open window. She could get in. Yeah. 
that's fine. And yet, later on in the movie, the cage is closed and the Cenobites are all just hanging around outside. I'm like, why don't they just go in through the window that the girl did? Surely they would know how to get in, but apparently it can only work for humans. I guess Cenobites can't get in somewhere unless they can just walk through even though they can materialize walls and doors out of everything. You know, it's like one of those special anti uh, other realm metals that can keep everybody out, one of those sorts of things. So old mate's been living in his mansion for six years uh, with some kind of horrible device in his chest that gives him pain all this time. And, well, I guess clearly he doesn't need to eat because the man mansion is abandoned and he's been living in a secret passage or something in the place. Like, it's kind of never explained. And then for the boyfriend to be the betrayer, and it turns out he's working for this bloke, well, how did that come about? That was, I mean, it's a nice convenient plot device, but it just seemed to be strange to come about. But in terms of, the justification for him dying in the end, yeah, fully justified. He betrayed, his betrayal led to a lot of people's deaths. So yeah, fully justified. And look, you could have had that as a house full of 12-step participants. They've all got a very strong affinity bond with each other because they've all been through the program and they're helping themselves get through the program. And then it turns out one of them has betrayed all the rest and tried to sacrifice them all to the cube. I think that would have been far better than what we got. Just because Clive Barker's name's attached to it doesn't mean it's going to be any good. So in that sense, his death was justified, but the whole plot elements about how that came about just seemed to be a little bit weak for mine, at least anyway, a little bit weak to me. Now, the other thing was when the cube became in its final configuration the big boss old mate well he kind of demanded to see the head leviathan cenobite thing whatever so he kind of had already done that so this was the second option i, I suppose but then the girl got granted her wish as well because she was holding the cube, and I, I guess she was responsible for the final sacrifice of, of the cube. And look, her choice was, I'm not making a choice. So they said, oh, that means you choose this. So you'll just have to live with the guilt of all of this. And I'm sure she's probably fine with that, but we'll never know unless they make a, a sequel to this. I mean, she might have horrible dreams like in American Werewolf in London where she's got hallucinations sitting right next to her or something. Like, you, you, we're not going to know. We're not going to know unless they decide to make a sequel to this. But overall, I thought the movie was too long by at least half an hour. There were some convenient plot devices that just didn't make any sense. Multiple scenes could easily have been cut out and it wouldn't have made any difference to the movie. And that's how we would have could have shortened it. And there was no sense of terror, dread or foreboding coming from the Cenobites or anything like that. That's my view on the movie. Look, should you see it or should you not see it? If you're a fan of Hellraiser, look, you, you, ha you kind of have to see it. If you don't really care one way or another about Hellraiser, then I'd say go watch something else instead. Uh, or if you want to see it and you've got other things to do, put it on in the background and maybe you can do your ironing or do a meal in the kitchen and just look at it every now and then because it's certainly not really one that I would recommend to specifically go out of your way and sit down and turn the lights off and get the popcorn and let's just spend two hours in this movie. I think you'd find a different, a better movie to spend two hours with. And that's what I think. And let me know what you think in the comments below.